What's going on and welcome back to Red Tech. I'm very excited to show you something that we've devoted a lot of time and effort towards. Today we're going to take a closer look at our new camera purpose built specifically for rental houses, the Red Ranger. This camera houses our industry leading Monstro 8K VV sensor and was designed with high-end cinema in mind. The goal was making a user-friendly, standardized platform for filmmakers. We met with several rental houses and a variety of top industry professionals to ensure we were on target. Image versatility and the AKVV Monstro go hand in hand. You can shoot large format full frame glass to maximize the whole sensor or easily drop down the resolution to 6K to accommodate any Super 35 glass that you may prefer. This gives you total freedom to choose any glass that fits your aesthetic while still maintaining image quality. Usability is critical. So let's take a closer look at the overall design of the camera. For owner operators, modularity is key in terms of its usability. Being able to configure the camera however you want to accommodate your exact shooting style, it's awesome. However, from a rental and camera assistance perspective, modularity can result in complications in the camera prep, which can lead to frustration. This standardized, fully integrated design ensures that no matter what rental house you're prepping out of, you'll know exactly what you're in for when pulling this camera out of its case. So no more uncertainty as to what modules, top plate, or battery plate combination you're getting with your RED camera. No more trying to sort out what third-party module you'll be powering your accessories off of, or where you're gonna maybe mount a video DA to make up for a module that lacks necessary connectors. This is a big deal. Camera departments usually have a lot to accomplish in prep, and this standardization should make it feel less daunting to one, rent the camera, and two, prep it. It boils down to less time focused on building out the camera and more time dedicated to taping out lenses, organizing gear, surprise camera tests, whatever. Since we're talking about taping out lenses, actually, an industry standard that we've incorporated is the use of a new shimmed PL mount to ensure lasting stability. So how else will a slightly larger, more integrated body improve usability? The big one is cooling. To start, the new default fan mode is set to quiet. This allows the sensor temperature to drift a little further without an aggressive fan ramp to quickly bring you down to your target temp. Overall, this is a more efficient fan mode and more appropriate for keeping the noise to a minimum on set. The core of the camera contains a lot of the same internals that you would find in a DSMC2 Monstro. The space below our integrated top plate allows us to use a larger fan with an improved series of heat sinks and aluminum duct walls. All of these combined make for a quieter, larger heat exchange off of the sensor and other components. When looking at the DSMC2 fans compared to the ones found in the Ranger, you'll see that the DSMC2 has two 40 millimeter fans with a 6500 RPM max, whereas the Ranger has a larger single fan that's 60 millimeters with a 3500 RPM max. This larger fan can move air much more efficiently. When observing the same sensor temperature on Ranger compared to DSMC2, the Red Ranger is quieter across the board. At one meter and at an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and 39 degrees Celsius sensor temp, the Ranger will be less than 20 dBA, while the DSMC2 will ring in at 33 dBA. When testing in our temperature chamber, even when shooting with the fans at their lowest settings, which is 20%, at an ambient temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, or 95 Fahrenheit for us, there was never an instance with continuous recording where the fan override was kicked on. This is typically triggered when the camera's core temperature reaches 80 degrees Celsius. The Ranger really just capped at 75 degrees, whereas the smaller DSMC2 counterpart hit 82, then the fans were automatically initiated to stabilize the camera's temperature. This improved cooling means that Ranger is capable of staying in the ideal temperature range longer and as a result requires less frequent black shading. Sound departments rejoice. Personally, I feel like the size of the camera is just right. Not too ridiculously big, but also not so small that you find yourself struggling to balance or mount necessary accessories. To better understand the size of this unified body, it is 36% shorter and 58% lighter than the Alexa LF, 
and compared to the Venice with the RAW recorder, it's 17% shorter and 35% lighter. The next big ticket item from a usability standpoint are the connector types and grouping of the camera's integrated I.O. Starting in the back and working our way forward, we have the option for gold mount or V-lock batteries, red standard control port, two pin 12 volt aux power, three SDI outputs, Gigi, DC power input, five pin time code, gen lock, USB capable of charging iPhone and Android devices, integrated five pin XLR audio input, headphone jack, two pin 12 volt power, two red pogo pads, and finally, two three pin 24 volt aux power connectors. Similar to the new production module, the camera's three SDI outputs, SDI one and two are mirrored, and Mon 1 is independent. Having independent outputs allows you to dictate whether or not you want to send an industry standard output transform like Rec. 709, Rec. 2020, or the log primary development out to your monitors. This gives you the flexibility to send the appropriate video signal to anyone immediately surrounding the camera and still have a discrete output for the DIT so they can dial in the look with the DP before distributing it out to Video Village or Video Assist. Mon 1 is shared with the left red monitor pogo pad. Each of these outputs will auto-select when a new source is detected, but you also have the option to manually override the priority in the camera menu. The next connector I want to focus on is the camera's DC power input. We've upgraded it to a larger connector that supports a wide input range of 11.5 to 32 volts. It's able to provide sustained power for some of the more demanding accessories while ensuring the camera isn't underpowered. If cameras receive insufficient power, it could result in brownouts, errors, and an overall decrease in camera stability. The other benefit to having a bigger connector is that it allows you to use a larger gauge wire. Now this is helpful when dealing with line loss on longer runs like on a techno crane or a pursuit vehicle. The five pin XLR audio input is line, mic, phantom power selectable and supports two channels of audio with a Y cable. Since audio is often recorded separately, we wanted to keep the audio profile small on the body but still available should someone need it. When cameras are rented, reliability is paramount. And since the internal components are largely the same as the DSMC2 system, it's gone through years of real world testing and firmware optimization. The unibody design adds to the system's overall reliability. There are far less potential points of failure. You don't need to worry about the integrity of the connectors between modules or their alignment. Lastly, it reduces the amount of third-party accessories that could impact the stability of the overall system. All said and done, the camera puts emphasis on three important factors, usability, reliability, and image quality. All of these cameras are kitted as a package that includes the following. You got the Red Ranger with a shimmed PL mount and either the V-Lock or Gold Mount flavors, a red monitor adapter for each pogo pad, the production handle, two 15 millimeter lightweight rod adapters, and the Red Pro Touch seven inch LCD. All right, so in summary, the Red Ranger is a unified, fully integrated body housing the 8K VV full frame Monstro sensor. It has multiple SDI outputs that support independent display LUTs, a wide input voltage, has ample accessory power outputs, efficient temperature management, and it supports IPP2. So check out a list of our authorized rental houses at red.com and reach out to see if they have availability. And I will see you on set.